Hey y'all, I'm Shayna and I'm back with another review. This is for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6 Episode 9, Ready to Pop Off. I don't know what was ready to pop off because this episode was a little boring, but <laughs> y'all know how it is. No matter what it gives, I'm going to give y'all the best that I got, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we do, if you're new here or if you're not, either way, be sure to, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe because this is a growing channel. I'm trying to grow my channel and I need your help. So definitely be sure to check out my other content. Subscribe, like, tell a friend to tell a friend, all that good free stuff, okay? So we start off with Marcel and Tisha. Um, Marcel comes home and he and they give each other the weakest peck I have ever seen in my life. Like I've seen people kiss their animals with more passion. So they say they're moving into an apartment while their so-called rental property that they've been living in, aka their house, their regular house that they try to call rental property <laughs> is being fixed. What happened to that townhouse they used to live in um, when they the show first came on? Did they sell that townhouse? Did they sell that for Scott Manor? I don't know. So Scott Manor is going to take another two to three to 30 years, child. So, I mean, they got to do what they got to do. And <laughs> Tisha, like, I'm just making sacrifice after sacrifice. Girl, you've been making sacrifices since you met this man, okay? But y'all, down. I seem like I'll downgrade every time. I mean... I ain't going to say renting an apartment is much of a downgrade because we know rent is expensive, okay? Rent is high right now, like, whew. <coughs> uh, it's, it's, it's unaffordable is what it is. But, I mean, y'all a family of five. Y'all don't went from the town home to what seemed to be, you know, nice amount of space to this house with barely any closet space. Y'all called it a rental property. I don't know who y'all was renting it to because y'all been living in it for years. Now, an apartment. Okay. So Marcel's no ring wearing self starts gossiping about the conversation between he, Tiffany, and Martel over there at Black. I could barely focus because Tisha, throw that wig away. That color is awful. Tisha is very pretty, but that color, I don't know if it would look right on anyone, honestly. So then we see over there, we see Tiffany. She getting home. It's dark, so we know this was filmed at two different times a day. Okay. <laughs> so she gets home. And Karen, I mean Tiffany, tells Big Lou what happened over there at Black. She tries to downplay being inappropriate because she's like, oh, I asked Jeray how it felt to be with a cheater. And Big Lou was like, you said that. And she's like, I mean, yeah, like I've cheated, you cheated, we've all cheated. We Girl, no. Very inappropriate. Hi, nice to meet you. How do you feel being with a cheater is inappropriate, Okay. So, Big Lou gonna say, well, I'm, she's a grown woman. I'm sure she felt the way she would have said something. She did say something to Martel, her co-worker. So, back over there with the Scots 1.0, Marceau mentioned Tiffany asking, do you think your honeycomb is good enough to keep him? Now, Tiffany proceeded, uh, he was like, Tiffany proceeded to say, it's because I like blended families. And they're like, now what that got to do with the blended families of it all? Uh, and y'all know I'm shameless plug. Last week I had said, check out my Instagram page, black blended families underscore. Y'all can still do that this week too. You know, I love the black blended families of it all. Okay. So Big Lou act like he going to do something. He like, I'm going to say something because before I was new. But now if you was going to say something, you would have said it then. And you ain't going to say nothing then. You ain't going to say it now. We know all he fitting to do is apologize like he always do. So we see Kimmy um, and Maurice. They look like they driving to her to her appointment. Um, Maurice was like, your eyebrows is growing in. And she was like, yeah, you know, but I still don't feel sexy, like, without my hair. And um, she just admits that she's been faking it in the bedroom. And I'm like, why did we need to know? <laughs> why do we need to know this? Did the producer say y'all need to share a little more about what's going on behind closed doors or what's going on? Because we really, first of all, okay, like, is she going through chemo, radiation? Like, where is the shock? Yeah, my sex drive would be at an all-time low. There's more important things going on right now. We didn't really need <laughs> to know this. But Maurice feels away. He like, wait a minute, you have been faking it? Like, what? Yeah, 
She's been faking it. She probably was faking it before, but okay, never mind. This conversation dragged on way too long. Like, way too Like, we saw literally the entire conversation. Like, y'all ain't chop it up, edit, take nothing out. Y'all play to start to finish. We don't care. Who's <sighs> We just... So then, Kimmy has yet another long, drawn-out conversation about her little libido with her homegirl. Where, where is this friend? Where did you get this friend from? She just could not wait for her five minutes, okay? It looked like she was reading off of a script. I'm like, well, where'd she come from? Her and that faux furry scarf. And I know because I had got me one off of Amazon last year. But I am glad that uh, Kimmy shared for other women who may be going through the same thing. They may feel like they're the only ones or they're going through it alone. And that's great. You know, we just didn't need so much. Like, we didn't need it. We didn't need all of the conversation. Like, we just, I mean, it dragged. Okay. So we get over there to uh, Tiffany and Big Lou's baby shower. And at one table, everybody over there chatting, Marius, Kimmy, Tisha, Nell. I can't stand that lady's name. Like, it's literally N-A-I-L. Like, what? <laughs> what was her mama thinking? But okay, I mean, it could be worse. It could be worse. Okay. So, uh, everybody's talking about what Tiffany said to Sheree and Martel's event. And, you know, Tisha letting it all. She's like, oh, and she said the P word. And, and then it's like, oh, shh, y'all, shh. Here come Melody, hush. So, Melody come over looking like, what y'all was over here talking about? So, Miss Nell decides she wants to be the bone carrier. She want a little more camera time. So, she going to bring it back up. Why? Like, why? <laughs> so Tisha was like, we really didn't want to talk about it. We didn't want to make you feel uncomfortable. And y'all should have stopped there. We, we really should have just left it there. Mel, like, ain't nothing y'all can say to make me uncomfortable. Child, a look all over her face said discomfort. Okay? She looked very much uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> Stormy mentions them calling Mel a fan. Mel was like, I was a paid speaker at the same event. Okay, try again. I don't really like how loosely we use fan, like, in just in general, just uh, besides this show. Like, every I'm, I was scrolling on Instagram, and I seen Jess Hilarious. Shout out to Jess Hilarious. But she was talking about my fans, and I'm like, fans? She's an Instagram comedian. And I'm thinking, these influencers and public figures who might be, you know, a little well-known are getting a little carried away. Fans? Like, I might be a supporter, honey. I support you and everything, but I think I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, look, look over there. There's that public figure. Now, if Beyonce over there, okay, yeah, baby, I'm a fan, okay. But you over there and you got a little Instagram clout, no. You, I mean, yeah, you're on a reality show, but okay. <laughs> but I mean, oh, uh. now if you like, I'm a mellow meter, now y'all some fans. But if you're like, I just enjoy watching the show and you just so happen to be on it, maybe I just support the show. <laughs> but uh, Mel was like, no. Now, if she was a fan, she wanted to be on reality TV. Let's be, let's be for real right here, okay? She wanted to be on reality TV. So maybe she did enjoy watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. I mean, Real Housewives of Atlanta was hot at the time. You hear me? Huh. <sighs> So what if she was? Like, and if she was, this was years before Sheree had a fake relationship with Martel. So, so what? So, uh, Tisha brings up Tiffany saying the P word, and this is just cringy. Mel was like, you know what? I I'm about to give me a play. Like, she checked up the deuces, but it didn't make no sense because she sat right back down. <laughs> so then she sat back down, and they started dragging it on again because there's nothing else to talk about. So what else they going to be saying? So Marcel and Marceau arrived, and Melody was like, oop, that's my cue to go. Bye. <laughs> so Lou approaches Martel to go outside and have a discussion. And Martel drags Marceau along with him because he don't want to talk to him by himself. So he said, look, <laughs> I wrote down. I said, Martel said, we all in it now. No, Marcel, you in it now. Ain't no getting out. You in it. <laughs> they go back and forth about not approaching each other's wives and whatever. I see where Lou is coming from about, like, you should approach me, but you ain't, you not the one that was talking to Sheree. So I'm going to approach the person that was doing the chit-chatting. That's the one who needs to be approached. Like, it is what it is. I don't really feel like 
uh, Martel, Marceau said anything disrespectful to Tiffany or anything like that, that this needs to be addressed. Uh, Tiffany was just pouring it on a little thick because she wanted, she did shit, but she can't take it. She throwed a rock and hide her hand. She also didn't tell her husband everything because they mentioned the whole P word. And he, uh, Big Lou was like, oh, I didn't know she said that. Yeah, you ain't know because she, she didn't tell you everything. That's why you need to find out all the facts before you come in hot like that. It's like when parents go to teacher uh, parent conferences, and they be like, my child wouldn't do this. My child wouldn't do that. You don't even talk to the teacher, find out what's going on. Let me hear all the facts first. Then I'm, I know how to, what to say next and how to approach this. Because now you out here looking silly and your wife was doing the most. Maurice calls up, comes out, and who calls him? Like, what? we ain't need you to come out. So, Big Lou, as expected, apologized like I knew he would. And then afterwards, Tiffany said she can't see. Probably stressed from all the drama she got. By not see, she really meant I can't see what's going on outside, and, and it's upsetting me. But anyway, that's where the episode ends. We'll find out what goes on next week. What y'all think about Love and Marriage Huntsville? Do you think it's run its course? I do. I think we need to take, put it on ice, take a break. But it's okay. We gonna we in it now. We just gonna keep on watching it. Y'all, let me know in the comments. Be sure to like, comment. Most importantly, subscribe. I got other content on the way. I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.